Hello everyone, how's it going? It's your host Devon is here with the Trip Sitting Podcast, here to inoculate you with some new knowledge. And today, I have a very special episode because I'm joined by my friend, Chantal. And we're here to talk about a few things related to psilocybin, spirituality, and just all those things um, in between. And like I was telling you guys in like my previous episodes, I know this is more of a mycology podcast, but I wanted to branch out in more aspects, you know, talk about spirituality, lifestyle, things of that nature. So I thought I'd break that ice by getting someone who I think knows a decent amount about spirituality. So let's get into the first question without further ado, without further ado and that is, why do you believe trips inspire so many people to get into spirituality? Like, what's your personal opinion on that? Um, personally, I think it has to do with, usually when you're on a trip, it kind of, it takes away those like mental blocks that usually uh, cause people to worry about things or cause people to be, feel anxious about it. Personally, the times when I've been high, I've been, um, it sort of, it relaxes me and takes away all that anxiety I have and I feel like I'm able to do more and I feel like you need to have that confidence and ambition in yourself when it comes to spirituality and getting things done within the spiritual world sense. Yeah, I can kind of resonate with that. It kind of reminds me of this um, ideology that I picked up from this music producer that I used to listen to. He always used to say the hardest part about starting anything is the actual starting. You know, a lot of the times people can be like, oh, this is too daunting, this task is too daunting, I've never done it before, so it's probably difficult, and that one mental block right there thinking something's too hard before even trying it is what stops a lot of people from achieving the things that they want to achieve, so I think that what um, connects spirituality with mushrooms so much in terms of, like, why does it get people to get um, into spirituality is just the main fact of whenever you start tripping, you have these, I mean, you've told me before that you've never tripped, so Mm -hmm. there's like this... There's like this mindset that I always say whenever I start tripping it. I call it the, I call it the shroom brain. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have a better name for it. But it's basically like you have like a totally different like train of thought. Like usually I'll be like I have to I have to go to school, do this, do this. But whenever you're on shrooms, you're like, I remember that thing I did ten years ago. And what, what was really that? Like it makes you. It makes it kind of forces you to unpack different things. Yeah, and I feel like that's very necessary when it comes to spirituality. You have to unpack certain, not necessarily traumas, but certain things that you don't really think about in order to fully heal. A lot of the times when people start practicing, like, certain, like, with certain religions and stuff like that, whenever people start practicing them, they kind of have to heal and, like, break down a lot of the barriers that have been holding them in the past. So I feel like with trips and the way you describe it, it really shows that. And how it's able to do that. Yeah. And I actually liked how you brought up religion too. Because I feel like faith in general. And not just like, you know, Christianity, you know, Muslim, Buddhist. Just faith in general is a really big part of what connects spirituality to like trips. It's just like a lot of people don't really have faith in anything. Because they can't see anything tangible. But when you're on a trip, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of just makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that that's kind of what drew me into um, converting from being a Baptist to a Buddhist anyways. Because... A lot of the ideology of Buddhism talking about, you know, being one with the self, the mind, the body, the soul, you know, the fact that our bodies are husk and that we are actually souls and like energy. Mm-hmm. Like, whenever I started tripping, I'm not going to lie, the first ever time I did, I was dead as like, yeah, all that shit is real. Because like, I felt like the trees were talking to me. I felt like I could hear the grass. Like, I felt like I can feel the energy from the grass. Like, it was just like things I've never like actually felt whenever I was practicing another religion. And it's what made me push to that. And I think... In spirituality, just in general, it kind of teaches you, you know, like, you know, the same thing, like, you know, the soul, you know, um, being one with your body, your mind, you know, things like that. So I think that's one of the main, and that's kind of goes into the second question I already asked, which, I mean, I was going to ask, which is, what are the connections between, you know, psilocybin, you know, tripping in general and spirituality? But we're, since we're on the topic, I guess we can still, like, expand on it further. Yeah, so the, the connections between the two? Yeah, yeah, just... I mean, I guess, um, not, I guess the question is kind of weirdly worded. I guess I mean more or less, why do you think people always, like, co- like always connect the two together? Like, why do you think people who are spiritual always, they always be like, oh, you probably trip, you probably do acid or something like that. Well, um, well, from what I've witnessed, uh, based on my, some of my family members who do, t- usually are often on trips and stuff like that, um, they, ca- it come. It kind of, they kind of go to that direction because they have a lot of 
issues not that everyone who does it has issues but a lot of people that i know they have certain issues and things that they've dealt with that have sort of traumatized them and they use shrooms a lot to like help them sleep like sleep is a big thing like for example like my uncle like he takes them to help with his anxiety and sleep because he's gone through a lot of crazy shit when he was younger and because of that it kind of like helped him find a sort of balance that he needed and because of that he started to move away from catholicism which is what my family practices but like we or yeah but he moved on from catholicism more into like occultism spirituality and stuff like that because i think taking shrooms and stuff like that um really helped him be more in touch with himself and be more be, be able to i guess heal from some of the stuff that like my family has experienced in the past you know and i feel like there that is that connection most of the time where that it helps people see things in a different way and it helps them understand things about themselves that they need in order to move on and change yeah i i would 100 percent agree because i was telling you earlier about the whole thing with the i've told you guys in the podcast before about my first ever trip with the dog and i was telling her about it off um the podcast but yeah, I really do feel like a lot of the times whenever we have this internalized, like, trauma that... Sometimes we don't even realize it's there until you take a trip, and then it kind of, like, brings it to the forefront, and you're like, wow, I've been holding on to this weight forever. And it feels like whenever you do a trip, you're like... You basically, like, have a ther you have a therapist that you don't even have to talk to. He kind of just guides you through the experience. And um, I guess also what I was about to say is one of the reasons, personally for me, that it can it's connected It's because, like, like you were saying, how... If sometimes people kind of feel like they have nowhere else to go, they feel like they've, I've been through all this, I've tried all the medications, I've done everything, but nothing's working. And like a lot of people are just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna do shrooms one time and see if it actually works. And I've actually seen this one study about this woman, she suffered from depression her entire life, right? And she was on antidepressants her whole life. And she was just like, I'm so sick of taking antidepressants, I'm, I'm so sick of feeling like I'm a robot, like I'm not even my true self because I'm only being suppressed. And like, if I top taking the pills, like, what will I become and stuff like that? So mm -hmm. she, I think she did like a three day, like psilocybin, not three, it wasn't like three consecutive days. It was like three days, but like three weeks in between each day. Mm -hmm. And like, it was like, I think on increasing doses. And she said that after the third like experience, she never took an antidepressant again. And she never felt those same feelings because she, she realized that that depression, obviously like, you know, depression and sadness are different like depression sadness you know why you're sad like you have a reason for it but depression is kind of just like psychological you know so you can't really determine that and she said that after her third trip she was she started to um all the all the wiring was different she's like i started looking at things in such a black and white manner i started to realize the nuances in life and that i don't have to look at things how i used to look at them just because that's how they were to me back then like I, I don't I don't remember the full story, but she was saying how she was like raped as a as a younger mm -hmm. woman, and that um, she used to always look at men in such a negative light because of that experience. But after that, she start she started to realize that it's not the men it's not men themselves that has the problem. It's that particular man. And if I keep holding that same energy towards every single person, I'm going to always have those negative feelings and those negative energy come back to me. So that's why I'm always going to be stuck in this state. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us who listen to the podcast or have tripped before can understand that there are these things in our lives that we are afraid of, or like, I wouldn't say afraid of, but we have these negative connotations to And once we really tripped and went, got to the bottom line of it, we were just like, oh, this was caused by this. And if I keep putting this energy, it's going to always give me the same energy. You know, you, mm -hmm. what you give into the world is what it gives back to you. So Yeah, exactly. And um, segueing into our last question, which is... Um, Personal, what is your personal, like, spirituality journey? Like, what got you into spirituality? What currently are you into right now? Like, I guess it's more of a personal question more than just, like, a podcast question. Okay. Well, for me, it kind of was something that was bound to happen because my my family's always been, I guess, very spiritual. So, um, I was raised Catholic, and my family is still Catholic. I still consider myself Catholic, but we also, when I was, like, six, seven years old, uh, my mom got really into Santeria, so which is related to Catholicism in a way, I would say, because it kind of stems from Catholicism. But um, we got really into that, so sort of that's kind of how I started getting really into it. And it had a lot to do with like, you know, talking to saints and having to do a lot of like 
spiritual work with, I guess, the dead and spirits and stuff like that. I'm not fully into the religion. You kind of have to do this whole big ceremony to become fully a part of it, but my mom is. But it's also, when I say we were Catholic, yes, we were very strong Catholic. We were going to church every week and everything, but we, a lot of the things that stem in my family history that it's not just me or my parents or my grandparents it goes farther than that it's been very like connected to uh curanderismo i don't know you've heard that before no that just sounds like that superhero from my hero academia no okay so essentially curanderismo it's kind of like witch doctors there are more spiritual healers that have to do a lot with um you know herbs and um stuff like that praying or kind of like cleansing rituals and stuff like that so my family's always been very connected to that even now like my mom will do like uh herbal cleanses on me with like like she gets a bunch of basil leaves and puts oils on them and she kind of like throws that on me or the whole egg thing cleansing of the evil eye and stuff like that we've always been very connected to that and um when i was in high school i was getting confirmed into the catholic church and it was one of the worst experiences i ever had because American Catholicism is very strange and it's very it's very similar to Mexican Catholicism but I think when it comes to Mexican Catholicism it's very it's a huge part of the culture and it's I think a little bit more it's more exciting and it's more like sacred it's very yeah it's sacred it's um it's a big deal it's a big deal to be Catholic in Mexico like it kind of you can't have one without the other but the thing about American Catholic churches that I didn't like it's they were so focused on like hate they were so focused on hate and whenever I would go to mass in Mexico it wasn't exactly like that yes they have like similar values but the hate was less so I kind of stopped I stopped going to church as soon as I got confirmed and um yeah I had to separate myself from that and I guess I'm starting now to focus more on I guess um, old school Mexican healing stuff like that. I've always been more into healing rituals more than anything else. And um, then I got into like tarot readings and stuff like that because my mom does that, my uncle does that, my cousin's really into that. I had I have uncles, other uncles who were older and are dead now, who were really good at that kind of stuff. That they were like known in Mexico for being like I guess like witches or whatever. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm just trying to get more in touch with my culture and spiritualism in there because I think like one of the more popular spiritual things right now is Wicca and I don't like Wicca at all because Wicca has a history of like stealing cultural pa practices from other religions and stuff like that. So I feel like that's a very big thing right now, but I feel like we have to acknowledge kind of like the history that comes with it. Mm, it's funny you say that because, okay, I'm sorry guys, you're going to be real mad at me, I, I own a mushroom podcast and I don't know their names, but it's funny you were saying like the whole Mexican rituals because how like psilocybin, like the whole craze even started in America is because this one um, scientist, he went to Mexico because he heard that there was this woman doing these healing rituals with mushrooms, mm -hmm. so he went there, and, and I, sorry again guys, I forgot their names, but you can look this up. But um, he went to Mexico and did the healing rituals and he was all like, yo, this is like the best thing I've ever done in my life. And he took it back to America. Then that was what started the Muslim Revolution. So it's kind of funny how you kind of connected the whole Mexican healing spirituality thing, and it still like somehow found its connection to the whole mushroom and like chirping and like experiences in general. Yeah, and I think that's a really cool thing about it. Kind of how important and big the history is, but there is kind of like it's very unfortunate that these kinds of like witch doctors, I call them witch doctors because I don't know the proper translation for curanderas and stuff like that in English, but there's also like a lot of hate towards them that stems from, you know, Spanish Inquisition. There's misinformation, not yeah. understanding. Like Spain bringing Catholicism, like it also comes from like how Catholicism has hurt indigenous people in Latin America and how like Spain brought Catholicism and they used that to attack indigenous cultures and a lot of curanderismo stems from indigenous practices. So there's kind of like you have some more hardcore religious people that kind of attack and hate that side of Mexican spiritualism, but it's that was already there, you know? Like, yeah. that's part of the history, so it's very unfortunate. Mm. Well, thank you for the insightful conversation, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it's a bit different, 
and I know it's a bit different format, but like I said, I wanted to add some other elements to my podcast rather than it being just a mushroom podcast. And I thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.